We've seen that threats and uh, harassment of journalists are on the rise in the Netherlands. Safety of journalists in the Netherlands. Grisha Sommer, Policy and Advocacy Officer at Free Press Unlimited. You joined an international fact-finding mission into the safety of journalists in the Netherlands. Even though the Netherlands ranks number six, I believe, on the World Press Freedom Index. Uh, why, why was such a mission necessary? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, what we see is that over the past years, the Netherlands has been uh, praised internationally uh, for the safety mechanism that we have uh, in the Netherlands called Persveilig, or in English, Press Safe. And this is an, a mechanism, an initiative that was actually developed by the police, the Public Prosecution Office, uh, the Dutch Journalists Union, and the uh, Society of Editors-in-Chief. And it's co-funded by uh, the government. And so in that sense, it's a very unique initiative uh, that, for instance, offers safety trainings, but also has protocols mm -hmm. um, about how uh, the public prosecution office should and the police should follow up on uh, press freedom violations in the Netherlands. So in that sense, the Netherlands really serves as a good practice example internationally also. But at the same time, we've seen that threats and uh, harassment of journalists are on the rise in the Netherlands. Uh, we've seen that the NOS, the biggest uh, public broadcaster, has decided to remove its logos from its vans because they could not guarantee the safety of their staff anymore. And we've also seen that last year, uh, Peter Erde Vries was uh, killed during broad daylight here in Amsterdam. So we received a lot of questions actually also from the international audience about what is happening in the Netherlands because on paper, your safety mechanism is, is so, so good. It's such a good uh, example, but at the same time, the safety of journalists is declining. Laurens, uh, ECPMF was also part of this mission. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how this mission fits into the broader picture of the safety of journalists within Europe? Yeah, so it fits the, this broader picture in, in two ways, I believe. On the one hand, uh, there's a number of trends uh, that we're seeing in the Netherlands that really dovetail similar developments across most European countries or many other European countries. One is the situation of women journalists. Our fact-finding mission found that also in the Netherlands, they are targeted by specific types of gendered and gender-based attacks and are more frequently attacked in certain contexts, especially online. We're seeing that more than their male colleagues, uh, women journalists are frequently attacked for who they are rather than for what they write or what they report on. Um, in this way, the Netherlands follow a European and, and indeed global trend uh, where we're seeing the same phenomena all over the place. Um, another group that's disproportionately affected by media freedom in the viol violations in the Netherlands and Europe-wide are, are freelancers. Um, a second important focus of the Netherlands mission and, and then the report as well is the interaction between law enforcement and journalists at protests. Across Europe, uh, demonstrations are one of the contexts in which press freedom violations most frequently occur with aggression and harassment against reporters coming from both protesters and the police. Um, this is a trend that we're also seeing in the Netherlands. And also here, we heard from our interlocutors during the, the fact-finding mission that tensions are on the rise uh, compared with five, 10, 15 years ago. Um, third is the threat from uh, coming from organized crime. This is less of a continent-wide phenomena um, than, than the two previous examples. But where it is a problem, uh, say, for instance, in Italy, it leads to particularly severe threats to journalist safety, uh, including in the most extreme cases, of course, uh, murders. Uh, as far as the Netherlands are concerned, while uh, the Vries' murder was with the information that's currently available, probably not directly linked to his journalistic activity. His death really sparked a debate on protecting journalists uh, against threats coming from the underworld that we're also seeing in, in other European countries where this is a problem. What I'm hearing is that these recommendations for women and uh, during demonstrations fit in line with global or at least regional trends. Uh, specifically for these two, how do you plan to follow up with these recommendations now that they fit in an EU plan? What, what will your plea be towards policymakers? It's a twofold plea. On the one hand, um, other European policymakers should learn from the Dutch experience. 
um, they should have a thorough look at Pax Veilig and see how they can take this practice and transpose it to their own to their own context. Um, of course, we, we found that the mechanism isn't perfect and there's room for improvement in several areas, but overall, it's a really good start. And our findings can help to inform policymakers in, in other domestic contexts. On the other hand, though, um, we're also seeing in the Netherlands rising threats against journalists despite the existence of, of, of this, this good practice example of this, this highly functional mechanism to, to protect and to improve the safety of journalists. And so that's also something um, that, that I think is, is relevant for other European countries and contexts. Um, there's a need to, to improve the understanding of the, the societal context in which these threats occur and then to also um, implement, implement policy measures that, that can tackle the, the, these contexts, that can, that can address the, the challenges that come from having groups that are becoming more polarized, that are becoming more vocal, and that express this kind of polarization, amongst other things, in the form of, of violence against journalism, or journalists, rather. Uh, so this is also some, it requires more study in the Netherlands, uh, is, is one of our findings. Um, this is also true for, for many other European countries, but we're seeing similarities between what's happening in the Netherlands and what's happening elsewhere. So even with such a good mechanism as Persveilig in place, uh, you yeah, we're, we're, we're still being watched. There's still journalists in decline. And that links to another recommendation in the report, which I want to ask you about, Gisnau, is the need for prevention. Mm -hmm. um, could you elaborate a little more about the need for prevention? Since we see that um, threats against journalists remain on the rise, uh, we, ne we conclude in our report that we need to do more, the Netherlands need to do more than than, than improving coping mechanisms really mm -hmm. to deal with those threats, but we need to go, we need to look at the underlying causes. And how do we do that? So, what, what is prevention? So prevention, um, I think what would be a first step is to do more research into why do people harass journalists? Is yeah. it because of a lack of trust? Is it because of polarization? What mm -hmm. are the reasons? Is it because they don't feel heard? Maybe we will need to find out uh, more about the underlying root causes. And following from that, uh, we advise the, especially the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science mm -hmm. in the Netherlands to see how education can play a role here. Because for instance, yeah. in media literacy, um, we see that there uh, tends to be a focus on really making children more resilient to fake news, yeah. uh, which is, of course, very important. But we think that this, this should perhaps be expanded a bit. Um, and maybe in education, there should be more focus on um, the role of journalism in society yeah. um, and more about strengthening that position of journalists and of media. Yeah. Um, so that's that could be an, uh, an uh, a policy uh, answer. Yeah, that that sounds very logical and important. So basically, a broader understanding of the role journalists play in society. Yeah, because that's particularly particularly important, where you see that journalists are increasingly portrayed and also perceived as the mm -hmm. opponents of well, sometimes the authorities, sometimes uh, the people, yeah. you know, where uh, when we have politicians who call um, uh, the NOS fake news, for instance, this, of course, has an impact on how people perceive the NOS. And I think for that reason, it's very important that we 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 pay attention to that and to the yeah. actual role of uh, the media. How is the research conducted? How did you go about this mission? As we said in the beginning, this uh, mission was conducted in the Media Freedom Rapid Response um, uh, Consortium. And we're a consortium of seven press freedom organizations. We're funded by the European Commission. And together we organize these kind of missions to uh, countries where we think press freedom uh, deserves a bit more attention. So first, we, um, uh, together with the ECPMF and with IPI, uh, we, uh, we did a lot of desk research. We also consulted the Dutch Journalist Union, the NVA, to make sure that, um, uh, that we also took their perspectives into account uh, yeah. and we took their expertise um, into account as well. Then we had over 20 
Well, we had meetings with over 20 interlocutors or stakeholders, yeah. ranging from uh, the policymakers to politicians, um, uh, to, of course, journalists, uh, the journalistic community and editors in chief. But we also spoke with a lot of academic experts. Um, and the police, I believe. The police as well, indeed, because they, of course, have an important yeah. role to play also in Persveilig. Um, and um, all these, well, the, the meetings were very interesting and we also noticed that there was a lot of interest from uh, from the public as well, but also the people that we approached for these meetings. So yeah. generally the, the response was very positive. And in the past uh, month we've been, um, um, well, we've worked hard to, um, uh, to analyze all the findings yeah. and to write them down in a report. The last question to you, Laurens, and then we are rounding off. Um, if you could spotlight one recommendation, one, what would that be in the report? Uh, apply a gender lens. Women journalists face particular challenges. Um, but what we found during our research was that it was very hard to uh, gauge the, the intensity and the precise nature of the problem, in part because there's no ongoing continuous monitoring of the situation. Um, and so, so that's something that really should be integrated into the Dutch approach and where we've also proposed some really practical solutions on, on how this could be how the, a start could be made, at least, with, with ensuring that this is better integrated into first the monitoring and then also the developing of tailored, targeted solutions that work. Perfect. I think uh, that's a good conclusion to end this session. Uh, apply a gender lens. That was a big recommendation of the report. Uh, thank you both so much for your valuable insights today um, and for being with us here. This was Studio Free Press Matters. See you next time.